And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Well, well, uh, welcome uh, to 100 Watts and a Wire. Boy, it's been a minute since the crew has been together and we've been acting like a fool for the last, uh, I don't know how many minutes that we've been together waiting for this program to start. This is episode number 386 of exploring the intersection of life and amateur radio. The goal, our goal, is to educate, entertain, and inspire a growing community of ham radio enthusiasts around the world. My name is Christian. My call sign is Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel. And my dude is here riding sidecar. Sidecar <laughs> Steve, W7 UDI. And it feels like it's been a long time, man. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, it has been. It's been since last year. It's so, been, uh, here first we are. show. First <laughs> show of the been, year. Uh, it's been uh, a long few weeks. We're glad to be back. Yeah, you were uh, traveling. We'll catch up on some of that. We don't have to relive it all. I feel like this, man. I'm like, uh, the day after Christmas, and I know my in-laws don't appreciate this, but uh, the day after Christmas, dude, I'm ready to take it down. I'm ready to take it down. And I think that's just changed since I've gotten older. Mm -hmm. But it, it also is a convenient, practical thing, too, because we're, you know, we're heading back to work and, you know, that you may not be, but you, and I'm like, you know, we spent six weeks with it yep you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then it kind of comes and it breaks like a wave and i'm like okay well, i'm cool i'm cool with that so uh yeah i'm i'm ready to take it didn't work that way uh it ended up going through christmas week and then it went to you know to the new year's my, my wife will keep me from taking it down a little too soon but but you know the kids still dig it but my in-laws this is uh january the 8th 2023 they took it down yesterday now, I'm not judging. <laughs> I'm just saying that to me feels like. And then they say, well, you know, it's the 12 days of Christmas. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So I'm not going to make everybody relive the whole thing. But we really haven't been together and, uh, and, and a good bit. It's been quite refreshing, actually. Uh, I'm just kidding. Look at this guy. <laughs> <coughs> What's this about refreshing? Huh? Scotty's here. We asked for refreshments, and I was like, "Who hey, are you guys?" Scotty. Yeah, right. Who is it? What? Look at it. Literal with him. Guys. Literally with him. He is getting ready for winter field day, and he's getting a beard going on here, and he's got it growing in. And I'm like, "Hey, who's that?" Uh, Scotty. Wow. There's so a mountain man action going on. Coming along. Coming along. Getting there. So what have you been up to without having to relive our whole Christmas miss, 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 and, and the whole New Year deal? Because I, I I'm like right out of New Year's, too. I'm like, all right, cool. Next, let's head on to the next thing, you know, and, you know, and that isn't all. You were home celebrating for that, right? You got back to your house? Yeah, I got back uh, on the 30th from uh, being in the Midwest and... Uh, <clears throat> Spent uh, New Year's Day on 20 meters and tried to spend New Year's evening on 40. Wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a, uh, so, that sounds like a story is there. We're going to have to talk about that. Just a little bit. A little bit too. <laughs> I wish I would have been operating a bit. I've been working. I've been working to try to, you know, keep things going. Just to let everybody know, um, we do this. Our listeners, our friend, new friends on TikTok, people who are finding us wherever they find us on Facebook, on the Discord, all that TikTok and everything. Uh, Sundays at 6 p.m. Central Time here in the Heartland, we kick it off live, record the show, and then you can uh, listen to it whenever you like. Uh, immediately following the show, we usually do a little uh, uh, coverage of the 100 Watson Wire Sunday evening net. So we get to hang with you in person in the place here. And then we get to transfer it over and hang out with you a little bit as we uh, co cover the 100 Watson Wire Sunday evening net. I'm getting a little bit of somebody's. I think we got an open open something coming back. I don't know what it is. It's probably not your headphones, but it's I just turned my, uh, well, I turned my cans down. down a little bit. <laughs> okay. Turn I don't my know. cans I don't down there. I ain't mad at you. I'm getting too old to be mad at I, people. I should know better. But I was hearing a little <laughs> delay, and it usually tells me I might have something open like YouTube or something like that. But anyway, so I'm curious to see what everybody else was doing in our community. Come on back and tell us what you've been up to. 
If you have a question, put a cue in front of it. We have a list of questions. They're growing every day. People send me notes. Now that we've uh, added TikTok, we're getting more questions. So I'm trying to handle some of those questions on the short tip when I can. If not, we'll bring it here and we'll open it up a little bit. But we've got uh, some questions going. If you'd like to get in the queue, put a queue in the comments here and we will pull it and get to you, so to speak. Well, I hate to hear the sad news that you have uh, a story to tell about an antenna. <laughs> but I think this is, <laughs> yep. if you've been following along on our Discord server, you may see that Steve has done some sort of $6 million man thing to his antenna. And I'm not going to give it away. I'm going to let him tell you this story. We can rebuild it. So uh, we, no, we'll tell, just build a new one. <laughs> tell us what happened, Steve. What what in the world went on? And anytime you hear a story about an antenna, you got to perk up. Oh What's yeah. That? Well, it's like I said uh, on New Year's Day. I spent uh, kind of the day on twenty meters uh, after getting back from being away for a couple of weeks in uh, in Kansas. Uh, it um, <clears throat> I got ready to for the. 40 meter net on our, uh, you know, on the 100 Watson wire, uh, Sunday night net. So I was, uh, getting things tuned up and all of a sudden, uh, my amp was not happy. It was kicking out offline and giving me high VSWR and, uh, lo and behold, it was greater than three to one. And, uh, it was like, okay, I'm done. Put a fork in it. Uh, I, well, I quickly, step back i went and grabbed my uh antenna analyzer and uh disconnected from the antenna switch took a quick uh, peek at it and was like oh we're done <laughs> there's no way i can recover nope. from this uh tonight and uh it's one of those that it was like well we'll just have to deal with it and um and go from there so this is an antenna i built back in 2015 and has uh, been up in the air for this whole time and uh it finally had a failure and uh and me being me i took it apart <laughs> and uh i took here's the center section to you know verify that everything was there so one of the things that i did was um i uh made a quick measurement so on the double bazooka you can take an ohmmeter and go from your shield and your center conductor of your feed line so this is the where your coax comes up this way and feeds the antenna you should see a DC short, you know, zero ohms or close to zero ohms. Nope. Open. It was open. So I, uh, I went out and, uh, just basically, uh, did some more measuring is like, okay, could it be the feed line? Could it be, um, could it be the antenna? So, you know, I kind of look at our, our radio stations, our setups as a, uh, as the, as the triangle, kind of like the fire triangle where you have, uh, heat, oxygen, and fuel for fire to occur. Well, for radio communications, we got to have three items. We have the radio, which is the stuff behind me or here. We had our feed line. We have our antenna, so the radio triangle. So if any one of those doesn't work, you're you're not in the game. So uh, so I went and uh, did some, you know, went out to the uh, – to the outside and uh, okay yep we it's an, either open in the feed line or uh, in the antenna bring the antenna down check at the uh at the antenna and it's open there and uh lo and behold here we are so what ended up happening just to uh, keep it uh, short and sweet He's like, bring I, the uh, camera back as, to me. As, bring it back to me. Look at this guy. Isn't his new contract? <laughs> <laughs> so we have the T. And in my video that uh, we that, that's posted, you'll see how I uh, put one of these together. Well, right here, right where my finger is, the center conductor broke because of uh, the angle. The antenna was put into a uh, it was an inverted V. So the wire was like this. And... After seven years, it uh, it failed. So I came up with a, a new, I, I rebuilt it. Or The only thing I saved from the old antenna was the T, and uh, it's now back up in the air. And instead of RG8X as coax, I built it out of 213. So, so nice. And 
For the folks listening, though, about right off the tee of this antenna, which is supporting it, supports it from the rope side, mm-hmm. it's almost like a cross, if you will, and, and you're yes. going to fasten the centerpiece to it, and then you've got the two elements coming off the side. So Steve is showing about six or seven inches down on one side. What do you think happened? So, Did the wind get a hold of it to just bend yeah, it? Yeah, I think over time as the... Uh, so in, so I had it set up that it was horizontal and then it made a, a 45 degree bend. And so over time, as this kind of flexed, um, it just broke the uh, center conductor, which is stranded wire. It wasn't uh, solid. So I, uh, with the newer, the redone, I've kind of factored in, I put in a, a little bit of a 45 degree uh, uh, drip between or down loop between the two uh, tie wraps and um, the video kind of shows it a little bit better and I, and I apologize for the people listening. So i um, trying to explain it, but uh, yeah, just think of a, uh, just kind of a, a T and then the horizontal part of the of the dipole is fastened to the top part there or the T and then the, the leg that goes down is where the coax comes up from your station uh, is attached that way. And so it's all affixed to this, uh, this T and then it, instead of kind of bending it down on the form itself. Teamwork. And get, Sorry, I'm grabbing your, I'm grabbing and, your video. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, we'll, uh, it will, kind of show I just kind of eliminated that so it was one of those things I thought about for quite some time after I built it it's like wow is this going to be a uh, a failure point and yes so uh, but uh, it's you know we live and learn but I got seven years out of it so now I gotta I have a new one I just had 50 feet of extra uh, RG213 laying around some 10 gauge wire and we just stopped it out pump the brakes <laughs> Somebody oh, just great. said, I had some extra 213 laying around. And friends <laughs> listening at home, I'm just going to say this. this. This is great. No, this is, we're not judging here. I just want to let you know this is high quality coax cable. And we have to understand the situation that this brother was in right here. He had 213, which you can bury, which is about, used to be about a dollar a foot. Okay. It's, Give or it's, take. Uh, it's, it's probably more now. Folk, yeah. But a little bit more, maybe even now in these days, because I don't remember. But it was about a dollar a foot, I remember. Good stuff. This is military type grade stuff, and it's thicker than your RG8 uh, X. And so mm-hmm. he casually threw this in there. Yeah, it has some 213. Like, wow, this is the part <laughs> where Steve Austin comes in, and it's like, we can rebuild him. So now your antenna can like run around the farm it can like <laughs> climb the ladder of the uh of the tower uh is it going to add a little more weight what will going up in coax size do for that antenna weight weight is the biggest uh is one factor and then it's a little broadbanded so it's uh it's definitely um the it's below two to one on the band edges so the full uh 40 meter band right now is uh, below two to one and uh and then i have another 100 foot chunk of 213 laying around <laughs> again <laughs> and guess what's getting replaced here probably in the spring the will be the 75 meter yep it's that's sexy and i thought about it because i have what is quote a chunk of coax it's 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 a pretty good run it's probably 75 feet uh from my switch up in the air whatever and i i swapped it out last year 22 and i thought about it i'm like i can make an antenna out of this and i was like smack myself in the face like you know you're not gonna go ahead and uh, make a an antenna out of 213 why not but I want it to, and you can, yeah. and I understand mm-hmm. your situation because you were ass out, as we used to say in Baltimore, without an antenna, you had to call out mm-hmm. of the net on Sunday night, seven o'clock central time, and you needed to build something. You can't go, my friends, you cannot go through life one day without your 40 meter antenna. <laughs> yeah, these were desperate <laughs> measures. Like I, I could see myself well, I, pulling two I, two thirteen out of the ground to make an <laughs> antenna because 
I could desperate. have done it out of 8x, the same thing, or even RG58. I you know, have plenty of that around, but it was just one of those that I have uh, uh, just kind of well, let's let's go a different route here. Let's go with something larger and see how well it works. And, uh, and just well, why not? It. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. So looking at this, so if anybody has any qualms or question of whether RG8X can handle full legal power, it does. Look, I mean, there is no burn marks or anything. Let's see. Let me try to get that to for autofocus there. Dynamite! And yeah, so there is no, there is no scorching, no nothing. So this, an 8, 8X will definitely handle full legal limit. And, uh, and I can attest to that. That's been running full legal limit for the whole time. And, uh, so I just decided to up the game a little bit and, uh, and go from there and let's, let's see what uh, 213 will, uh, will do. We're going to see what I do it's going to do. Tip. Oh, you got the <laughs> I tip. Do, I do have a tip. So come Don't give us the get, tip. Give us the whole in, thing. <laughs> I'm going to give you the whole thing. No, 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 no. And, uh, <laughs> and w ham fest season's coming up. So as you're going around to the ham fests and, uh, you come across these guys and you look under the tables and that's where you'll find a coil of coax and that guys are selling off pretty inexpensive. If you want to make a double bazooka antennas, that's a great source of getting some coax, whether you want to make it out of oh. RG8X or RG8 or 213 or any coax, look under the tables when you go down to your next ham fest. And uh, you can probably get a pretty decent deal of uh, on coax and uh, build yourself a cheap double bazooka. All right, let's go to the phones here. Actually, we may go to the phones later on our Zoomy Roomy. We do have one of those. I got to start it up. It's probably going to come your way later. Uh, here in the chat, Mark said, sidecar, making it rain up in here. We're talking about you. <laughs> KD5PCK says, Steve is a baller, a shot caller. Uh, W1UED says, sidecar isn't even hiding his money. He's hanging it in the air so there you go <laughs> there you go as we get a little feedback hey dj if i really want to show the money let, let's let's start building some out of half inch uh, heliax Woo! now we're talking stop talking <laughs> scotty okay, and i are taking no, no, over right now this, this, is time time this is enough this is this is enough this is time i can't i can't <laughs> take it so anymore you start eights. talking about <laughs> heliax i gotta get to the the history <laughs> i'm gonna mess on myself come on <laughs> You can make a double I'm bazooka out of that. Half inch heliacs. Whoa! There you go. This week in radio history, my friends, January first, nineteen o two. We were all just a little bit younger back in those days. Nathan Stubblefield. He was a neighbor of uh, Scotty's. There, he demonstrates his wireless telephone that used inductive and conductive fields. Very nice. Thank you, Nathan. January 6th, 18, 1838, Samuel Morse and Alfred Vail give the first public demonstration of the electric telegraph at the Speedwell Ironworks in Morristown, New Jersey. Hello, Jersey. We're thinking about y'all tonight out in New Jersey and a sad one. One of my favorite characters from the world of wireless and inventions in January 9th. 1943, Nikola, Nikola, Nikola Tesla passes away. And what bugs me the most here, shut the music, is uh, Nikola Tesla passed away penniless. And that is terrible in a hotel room. Uh, his uh, story is so unique and so terrible. I read a quote of his that he said something about it to his mom to paraphrase about, you know, every, all the things that he did, and it all amounted pretty much to him dying uh, penniless, which is a sad thing. Talk about it, Scotty. What was up with Tesla? Well, yeah, he uh, he was not a, a very astute businessman. He was all about uh, he was all about the science and his in, in discoveries and inventions, and he got totally shafted and taken advantage of pretty much his mm -hmm. entire career from Edison, the Westinghouse. Thanks, Edison. Um, and um yeah i was reading uh, um when the 
within hours after his death, apparently there was a uh, um, you know government agents in his hotel room going through and, uh, and his pulling as much of his research out as they trunks and trunks and trunks of research out. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, the, who knows what happened where that stuff's sitting? What's come out of that? On but January ninth, January ninth, uh, two thousand twenty-three, Steve makes a double bazooka out of platinum. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be on next year's This Week in History. <laughs> Thanks for that. KD5, double, PCK. Double platinum doublet. Appreciate that. <laughs> there ain't no way we got events this early in the year. Nobody's trying to get together this month. We got to wait until at least March or April when things get better. Right, Scotty? Uh, no, after the Christmas holidays, Hanukkah, all that what? stuff. Everyone's raring to go to get back into the action here. Good answer. Yeah, well. Have some good things happening. No, January 14th and 15th is the North American QSO party, the CW version of that. Uh, cool event, uh, January 14th, worked all Britain contest on 160 meters, um, single sideband oh. and CW. Oh, so the WAB contest, check that out. We also got the uh, Winter Heat Simplex event. Mm -hmm. um, somebody had posted about that on the Discord uh, server on uh, the events channel. Um, and uh, you can find out more about that at uh, hamactive.com. Um, what else we got going on all year long? We got a, a new, uh, sort of a new year long event the uh, Volunteers on the Air, the ARRL Volunteers on the Air. Make contacts with fellow ARRL uh, members, um, volunteer um, examiners, section coordinators, etc. There's a, a whole point system involved to earn points for various ARRL employees, volunteers, and members throughout the entire year of 2023. Um, and you can find out more information about that at ARRL.org slash volunteers on the air. So, yeah, got some things happening. If you got and something the going on with... the big event for the month? The big What's event? That? Winter the big event for the month. Yes, the, uh, oh. there is the big event of the month. There's actually a, a couple of exciting things happening. We have do have Winterfield Day happening at the end of the month, and also uh, an, a, a de expedition at uh, Bouvet Island down there near the Antarctic. Bouvet. The, yes, Bouvet Island. I think this is the, only the second time it's been uh, it's been activated. Last time it was 1976. Made a few a uh, few attempts that kind of fell through, but. Uh, uh, we have a channel dedicated to that uh, de expedition expedition on the um, on the uh, Discord channel. So well, it was uh, not last year. I think it was a year before. The de expedition team made it to the island. They could see they it. Saw the island, but they had an engine failure on the boat, oh. and they uh, they had to. Con they, the captain said, "That's it. We're going back to. That's we're it. heading off to uh, uh, South Africa." Yeah, too dangerous, duh. too dangerous for them to continue mm -hmm. on. The waters were too rough and all kinds of stuff. We we were all amped up for this two or three years ago. It's oh, probably yeah. three, mm -hmm. four, maybe even four years ago. Expensive. They got right to the oh, part yeah. where they could see the friggin' thing. Damn. They saw the and island. It couldn't go any and further. Just, and that was heartbreaking nice. for the for the crew because they it was a slow ride back because they were only on one engine and it was uh it was just uh, devastating to the community yeah. so yeah, so we wish them the luck uh the team is uh I, the last report i saw that they're gathering in london uh and then they're going to be uh from london they're going down to the falklands and that's when they're going to uh get onto the boat and then uh, uh sail to uh bouvet and uh, once they land uh it's going to be a a long operation, about uh, twenty days, twenty-two 20 days. days that they're That's gonna, right, yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be pandemonium yep. for the first week. All the big guns are going to be out there. I'm not going to even try, and uh, just because it's just going to be mayhem. But you'll be able to work them because towards the end of the uh, operation, the last week or so, they'll be begging for contacts, and uh, Do you think? they'll you'll be able to because everybody will have it in their log and they'll be done and they'll they'll be looking for uh, uh all time you know all time new ones for people so um they'll be listening for this <laughs> like that please please 
yeah, there'll be. Yeah, lots, so, lots of cool stuff happening this. Uh, this oh month yeah, oh, this is kick gonna off, be cool. Kicking off 2023. It's be great. Scotty yeah. mentioned uh, the uh, event uh, channel on the Discord server. If you have, you can find Bouvet. We've got something there. We're going to be posting up spots when we see and hear these things. Our community will come together to try to help each other work this station as much as we can see it. When you know whatever's going on with Bouvet. It's in there on Discord. Also, if you have an event, we have an events channel too. So let us know if something cool is going on, or even if it's not as cool to you, let us know and we will announce it here on the show. And also, ah, if you find value in 100 Watts in a Wire, you can support the content and the community that you enjoy by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash 100 Watts. It's easy as easy as buying a cup of coffee or consider the benefits of giving a monthly contribution if you're a member and you're here in the chat give us a thumbs up hit the thumbs up and the like and all that sort of thing and uh, consider the benefits of becoming a monthly contributor our dipole level is uh, a a dollar an episode that's just four dollars a month that's cheaper than actually a real cup of coffee yeah uh, buymeacoffee.com slash 100 watts you will help uh, ensure that we can continue and cover all the bases and we want to thank a few new supporters and they are November Victor 4 Charlie November 9 Whiskey India Bravo Whiskey 2 Golf Romeo oh Golf Papa Romeo my apologies W2GPR and K4LMS and Simon Thank you very much for becoming a sponsor and a member of our community. It means a lot to us. All right. Now, guess what? We uh, talked about a little bit. We uh, talked about the sexy antenna, which is great. I could talk about the antenna for, I don't know. I mean, we talked about past the duchy for on the left-hand side <laughs> for about 10 minutes. If you were here joining us in the sort of pre-roll uh, d- dance fest, it, uh, it was we were listening to... Uh, past the duchy and uh dancing strangely some um, good shenanigans going on there it was it was good i wonder what happened to those children and it brings back memories of my youth uh but uh there you go that's what we were dancing to but uh since we've uh, last gathered i asked what were our goals what are our goals um i think it was steve who said he doesn't make resolutions he he sets goals, resolutions, or something. Mm-hmm. If you didn't say that, I apologize. Yeah, I, just, I don't Maybe say it was resolutions. I just try to say goals because uh, <laughs> sometimes you can't make the goal. I think it could have been. It was either Steve or Mark Twain. I, I don't remember, but uh, you know, he's got the wisdom. Uh, so I, I'll go around the room here real quick, and then we can uh, see what else our community has put together for us. We've got some answers, and then and maybe we can uh, riff on that a little bit. Uh, Scotty, what are your goals for this year? Do you have anything uh, ham radio related? Uh, I'm going to uh, learn CW this year. That's my that's Ooh, the goal. I've I am myself. good answer. That's, I wish a, I that's had my goal. One. Last year was getting extra, and I hit it. And this year is going to be learning some CW. We need that. We need that now, and we have some ops uh, CW ops in our uh, in our community. So we need that. And uh, how about you, Steve? Uh. Heliax, double bazooka, 160-meter <laughs> Heliax. Uh, there'll what be Heliax involved and uh, around 45 and uh, <clears throat> hopefully a 40-meter beam, but uh, wow. we'll see. Okay. Well, that's cool. Me, I mean, I, I mentioned uh, that uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that I can uh, – I want to build some more antennas. This uh, I was inspired by Steve's video. And I did hold this kind of uh, thing in my mind that it was such a difficult thing and it was too sensitive for a brick-handed person like me to be fooling around. And uh, and then he really simplified the process. And lo and behold, I got addicted. There you go. There's some things in ham radio that become like, I got to keep doing that. I want to do that again. Let's do that again. And that was it. So I want to build some more antennas and uh, I want to just operate more. It's it, Last year feels like it was the year, the comeback year of, I don't know, work and everybody kind of came out of the shells in the house. And it was a it was a feeling of it's great, uh, but it just seems so busy all the time that I just want to operate a little bit more. Let us know what you want to do this yeah, year, definitely. ham radio related. 
and we'll talk about that. Some of our friends in the community over on the Facey Spaces, they said uh, they've got some plans too. Um, Mickey, he's a KN4WLM. He said, I want to pass the extra test. There's nice. uh, several people that want to pass their extra. You can do it. Take it from do us. Do it. Take it from us. Do it. You can do it. <laughs> if you... I can do it, anybody can do it. That's the truth. <laughs> That is correct <laughs> answer. If Scotty can do it, so can you. Uh, Paul, WD9GCO, our friend from, uh, what is what Chicago. is that called? Uh, no, yeah, he's in Chicago. What's that thing he does? <laughs> oh, Newsline. Amateur line. Radio Newsline. That's right. I just slipped my mind. <laughs> I am a little older now. <laughs> Good grief. My colleagues over there. I do stuff with them from time to time. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> Paul wants to do his first POTA activation, get an 80-meter antenna hung up, also finish setting up and uh, try to get uh, Bouvet Island. So he's got yeah. Bouvet on his list. Yeah, Bouvet on the mind. Yeah, mind. Bouvet. It's fun to say yeah. it. It's fun to say it. Daniel, he's Kilo Charlie 1, Mike Romeo Zulu. Uh, my goal is to see if I can get a 160-meter dipole up on my property. You could do it. It's doable. You can do it. Oh. Just put it up there and fight the neighbor later. Put it up there and <laughs> fight the neighbor later. You have later. to bend the wires and make some turns and go around corners. Do it. Hey, uh, look, I had K3LR on this some about one day, and uh, he told me his first 160 antenna. He didn't have the space at the time. And if you look up K3LR, this is a major multi million dollar contest station. But uh, in his more modest of times, he didn't have as much room to string out a 160 antenna. So he did an inverted L, and I'm listening to him like, yeah, 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 I'll never be able to do that antenna ever in my life. This was like 2015 or whatever. And he said, you know, he was the first one to tell me that you could send it up there, you could put it up and bend it down, dog ear it around. He was like, it wasn't perfect at all, but it worked. And I was like, oh, really? Because I was getting sketched out about every stupid thing Oh, it's touching a tree. Oh, it's not perfectly stretched out. Oh, it dog ears and bends down. It's it's not going to be perfect. K3LR, he was like, do it. Try it. Just put it up there. Just do it. Put it up. Um, just, just do put it. it up there. That's our Zig advice. Zigzag it wherever it needs to go. Zigzag yep. it. Make it a Z. See what's up, you know, and don't just don't get somebody hung up on, on the bottom end when you're tying it off or whatever you're doing. Keep it above people's heads. Other than that, you, you know, you're a... Uh, you're clear to bend it up a little bit. Woo! It might hurt just a little. Ed uh, <laughs> says, get my CW chops back and maybe work Bouvet. Oh, nice. He said, you, you uh, Bouvet? Bouvet. Are you, can I guess, can you pass the gray Bouvet? <laughs> what, uh, show my age The now. gray Bouvet. <laughs> the gray Bouvet. Bouvet Island. Bouvet, girl. I'm going to take you to Bouvet. <laughs> it would be the worst <laughs> trip we ever took in our life, girl. But I'm taking you to Bouvet. <laughs> I love you. Mike says uh, he wants to operate more. He's a little like me in that uh, sense. Do uh, some POTA and uh, get QRP Solar DXCC at one Ooh. watt. Ooh, he wants nice. to do one Ooh, That's, a, that's a goal. That's an awesome goal. That's hardcore there. Eric says uh, get doable. familiar. With digital modes on his FT-891, specifically FT-8, and uh, the FT tools to support Aries messaging. That's good. That's good stuff. Get into the uh, to the uh, MCOM type of side of thing. Uh, Sean says, improve my station performance and hopefully hit 20-plus different countries. Uh, currently sitting at four countries. Sean, let me just tell you, I'm going to show you all the boys' faces. You can do this. You can do it. Woo! You Tell can them. do it. It's easy. Not a problem. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. If you live long enough, you're going to do it. So keep living. That's all you got to worry about. It, it ain't a thing. You can do it. All right. Dell. He says, uh, what's this? Dell, get back to his uh, proper home, uh, mm -hmm. repairing after a fire, and get on the air more. He's currently using what he would consider a field day setup to stay on the air at his temporary home, uh, the Q speak for that would be Q T H. He's eighty seven K I. What did I say? Q T H. Did I say Q T H? Okay. Sometimes I say stuff. You know, I don't remember it. 
Oh, I did. did. Fred you says did. Uh, he's uh, maybe just uh, get either or both on uh, what's he want? He wants to do 144 megahertz or 1296 megahertz oh, EME man. array up. Uh, nice. But he said it's just That's a hobby, a... so we'll see. You like That's that, a Steve? Nice goal. Oh yeah, Earth, Earth we're Earth talking moon. big antenna system, big arrays. Ooh, for, big, old, uh, big old moon bounce for EME. Yeah, I baby. Like that. Fred, he's into NRV. Uh, make at least one ready QSO. QSO is more uh, Q speak. Uh, it's a conversation contact, and uh, get his CW speed back to where he can have a conversation without struggling to keep up. Joel says, uh, why, "Why just go one? on?" If, if you're going to do one, why don't you do more? Why don't you do uh, two? Because hey. one is none. Two is one. Yeah. So two. Yeah. That's what I need to do. I need to figure it. I need to. I haven't I've never done ready. I've never got FL Digi kind of sorted out with my rig yet. I'm, maybe that's another another goal for myself this year is to work some other digital modes other than FTA. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, this let's weekend see. would have been a good one for ready because we had the oh, ready contest yes. right? this weekend. Joel says, uh, give more tests and activate more parks. He's K1JSJ. Nice. Yeah. All, by all means, activate these parks. Where? I love it. It's so fun. It's so fun. Nathan, I was uh, contacted uh, actually yesterday by a team that's coming in from Illinois to activate the arch. And they were like, see, child, actually called me Mr. Kudnick. I was like, is this how it goes? <laughs> is this how it's going to be, Mr. Kudnick? <laughs> this- this is where we are now, Mister Kudnick. I noticed that you activated the uh, the uh, gateway arch. Can I ask you some <laughs> questions? And I was like, "This, Mister Kudnick." Okay. <laughs> yes, keep really? calling me. I know that would be awesome. <laughs> anyway, they wanted to know because it's tricky here in St. Louis with the parking, and uh, if you can set up, if can you go into the park? You know, which means you're going to park your stuff, lug it maybe into the space. But the arch has its um its own deal. It's 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 like one of those uh, protected spaces. If you want to go inside the arch, you take your shoes, your belt off, you go through the scanner. It's much like an airport. Wow. It's a national monument. Oh, man. So it's no joke. If you go through that way, all right. But the uh, arch grounds itself is actually quite large. It encompasses an old courthouse. Uh, with a lot of great history, it's along the waterfront, but parking is a mother if you're going during the week uh, when people are there working. I'm keeping a, an eye on the time. I'd like to go, uh, maybe Scotty can uh, help too. I would like to scroll back and see what other people are doing here in the chat, what they're looking to do uh, this year with their goals, if we can see anything there. You see anything, Scotty? Uh, yeah, actually, it was funny you mentioned that because okay. that's exactly what I was doing right that's now. That's what he wants back. to do. Yeah, I was, I was on top of things. That's right. Let's see who we got here. Other than the uh, Cowboys getting their butt handed to him, says Mark, I haven't watched any of the game. Uh, KD5 PCK, his goal is to upgrade to extra. Uh, and a second goal, nice. not to spend any more money on hand radio, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, you can do it. Um, <laughs> Uncle you Paul, can do it. he wants to try to do uh, more satellite work with his new, uh, his new, ante- his new satellite antennas that he was, mm-hmm. uh, that he's been building. Been following that on the on the Discord. I'd like to see some pictures, um, Uncle Paul. I know you've been building it on Saturdays, but you're keeping it very quiet. I want pictures. I want to see it. I want to he's keeping it. it close to the vest. It's like yes, yeah, he is. For sure. Like Share. Keep saying all I got to do is the radials. That's what he's been saying for, okay. for the last couple of months. Very okay. Close. Well, uh, yeah, he's been busy. God, don't break his balls. He's in Jersey. Sanitation work. He'll, uh, is you know, it? Leave it alone now. <laughs> I'm, sup- I'm not saying anything, but Tony Soprano's <laughs> character was, you know. You talking to me? No, nah, I think it was Polly Walnuts, actually, that was Polly mo- modeled after. Polly, uh, Polly, Polly Pickled Nuts. <laughs> anyway, Polly Pickled Nuts became Polly Walnuts. <laughs> yeah, you know the story. Come on now. Yeah. Don't bother me. Don't, don't tease me. I'll send Uncle Paul out to your house. We got uh, David. He wants to do at least one soda um, activation a month. Get out do some more hiking. Uh let's KJ7ZMO wants to get an antenna up in the wind that won't be destroyed in short order. <laughs> mm-hmm. Understood. Oh, James wants to get his antenna situation stabilized. I know he's been uh, he's been battling that getting that DX engine uh, DX commander um, dialed up in. Been going, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle wants to not spend any money at all if possible. Um, so he's like trying it. to set himself some realistic not goals. Not going to happen. 
That's not, not going to happen, happen, dude. Not going to happen. You can't do it. You cannot do it. So not with says, this crowd. <laughs> he's, he, he also says he got a Wolf River coil for Christmas, and his goal is to activate POTA at least once a month. So that'd be cool. That's you can do nice. for sure. All right, Scotty, That's I'm going awesome. to, I'm going to, we're going to, yeah. we're going to transition over to our ham fest because I can't believe this will be the shortest segment ever. There is no way in H oh, yeah. that anybody's organized yeah. enough in the ham radio world to come out of the box in January and start having <laughs> ham fest. Give it to us. Let us know the news. Yeah. Well, you would be wrong about that. January 14th, this is the Harrisburg Winterfest in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I actually may uh, may try to. It's only about 90 minute drive for me to get to Harrisburg, PA, so I may, may make that trek. We have the uh, also on the 14th. Don't freeze your ham off. Ooh. Um, in the, the <laughs> Phoenix Springs, Florida. Um, we have the Thunderbird Amateur Radio Club Ham Fest in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, and there's a, there's a bunch more happening. I actually posted all of the listings I could find on the events channel on our Discord server. So wow. you can uh, check that out for more listings there. Um, so, yeah, it's probably about 10 or 12 uh, ham fests that are happening next weekend around the country. Well, so, aren't you yep. kind putting it there on the, on the server? Very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Anybody who lives in Utah... Hook up with uh, Pastor Joe. He needs that for work to all states. We'll do that. And if you have a club or a gathering, let us know. Put it in the events channel on Discord. Drop us a line. The contact information is provided in the description. And if you're looking for a power solution, check out BioNO Power, offering the best lithium phosphate batteries for your ham radios. Visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O. Power.com. All right. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Let's, uh, we got uh, questions have been pouring in. And uh, I must say, I'm very grateful and surprised, frankly, that the uh, community at large, the international community, has come over to visit with me on my morning walk and talks on the TikTok, right? I know people don't do that. But I've also found people don't do YouTube. I've also found people don't do Facebook, <laughs> Steve, and many others. <laughs> you know, like there's this, I got caught up in my throat there. But, you know, it's, it just depends. And each one of these platforms, our social media, my goal maybe for this year is to try to meet you wherever you are. We're on YouTube for this. You could take the podcast with you if that's all you want. Good. I want to be in those places, you know, and I think we've got that stuff covered but questions are coming in and we hope to uh give you some of the answers if you're here with us as we record this live uh you're welcome to drop a cue in front of your question scotty will pull it uh so to speak and uh we'll try to get it in the queue you old dirty man you (laughs) are you ready are you ready steve-o it's been a minute since we've done this but yeah it's been a while since we've done this so might be a little rusty Dwayne. Might be a little rusty. Let's see. Here's a question. Any tips Woo! for dusting your... Sorry, Scotty. I saw him take a drink. And I didn't want him to spit up all over his, his stuff. <laughs> Any tips for dusting our equipment? Interesting question here and one that really has not come up. Actually, you know what? And this is season number nine, guys. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. We are starting season nine with this Ooh. show. Um, Steve, how do you keep that big, beautiful Collins set, uh, dust free behind you or clean that sort of thing? Well, for, for that equipment, I, it's, you can wipe it down and, uh, and I think where the, uh, the issue is, is the static, um, static charges. And, uh, so for older equipment, tube based, uh, you can wipe it, I wipe it down and, uh, just go from there, uh. Use a little bit of uh, like window cleaner, kind of moisten up a uh, a rag and uh, wipe it down. When it comes to the newer equipment that is static uh, sensitive, uh, canned air would be your would be your best bet. Or mm-hmm. if you got an air compressor, a little bit of compressed air and uh, kind of blow things off. But um, it uh, if you're worried about the static uh, uh, equipment, you know your equipment getting a static discharge, then yeah, go with the canned air. If it's older equipment, uh, just wipe it down. All right, good. Thank you for that question. 
You know, it's uh, interesting you say that. You got to be careful with the chemicals on these. Uh, you know, you get in there and you just start spraying stuff and you might bring in the, whatever kind of cleaner that works out there on your other stuff. But uh, I've heard a story where a ham operator had used some sort of harsh, let's just say harsher type of thing, and it, it wiped off like numbers and logos and lettering on the face. Like, I, that's a horror story. Have you ever heard that? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's I've had it happen uh, also. I was like, oh, crap. I used the wrong stuff. Oops, and, there goes uh, the G. The, oh, <laughs> there went the letters. and uh, Or it could... Uh, if you really get uh, some methyl ethyl bad stuff, uh, it could uh, soften up the uh, plastic on, you know, the knobs and, uh, yes. and other pieces of the equipment. So, yeah, you got to be really careful. Scotty, you got any uh, additional insight into this? You've got to keep a studio and uh, vintage and sensitive equipment clean. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. I I also am a fan of uh, compressed air, either in the can or with a little compressor. Um, but uh, yeah, they, you got to watch out for some of these chemicals. Um, there's this contact cleaner that we had that we tried to clean some switches and uh, some potentiometers with on our on our uh, on our Neve console, and this stuff literally just melted the the plastic housing of the switches, and we were just like, oh shoot. Um, we, but you know, we didn't know the like, contact cleaner. You know, I've never had that melt the plastic before. So there's a big there's a big sticker on it now. Do not use on consoles. <laughs> gotta be careful, y'all. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Mm-hmm. Resident uh, comedian KD5 PCK says leaf blower. There you go. If that's what you have, hey, use if you're what in the you shed, got. what you gonna do? Sure, <laughs> sure. One hundred watts and wire is not responsible for that piece of advice. Well, you can but thank blow you. out all the dust in your shack there if with the leaf yeah, blower. Sure. I like it. Sure. Next question. How can I maximize a small box truck for field day and other outings? This is from Jesse. Ooh. So picture this. He's got a small box truck, mm-hmm. clean slate. What can he do to kind of get himself sorted out for field day and setting it up? Oh, oh that's, yeah. a, that's a tough one. I mean, that comes that's down to way. how many positions you want to have in that box truck. If it's one, it's easy. Whoa. If it's multiple positions... It's uh, it's another. Dynamite! <laughs> <laughs> the wheels have officially fallen off. This is what happens and, when the boys get yeah. back together. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's. I would recommend Jesse is go around the internet and start looking at some of the radio clubs that they have trailers or their com vans and. Uh, pictures of what they have done to set it up to kind of give you an idea. I mean, um, you, um, it, it just comes down to what do you want to do? What kind of equipment you want to have in there and how far do you want to go? And remember the more stuff you put in there, the more weight's going to be on that box truck. So, you know, it's going to be, and, and if you want to have a beer fridge in there or a keg or whatever, other adult, uh, beverages and uh, it all all that weight adds up so but it uh, I, I'd say look around see what others are doing and kind of get an idea from that and go from there you got to kind of uh, organize your goals too and I see a question coming in we'll try to get to that as well we'll put it in the queue here uh, the super chat things they'll take priority for our folks here here who are here tonight uh, with us, but uh, we'll put you in the queue there for sure. It it depends on what your priorities are. Like if you have a blank slate, but you know, what do you want to do? You're doing M- MCOM, you're just kind of getting things sorted out. What bands, what modes do you want to run? That sort of thing. Like the uh, ICOM 7100, all these little portable rigs. I mean, even a 7300 takes up very little space. I mean, you know, you know, oh, you yeah. can, it just a, kind of depends, but I'm with Steve, you know, kind of look around and see and then Gauge what you want to do in that regard. What do you want to do in that truck? Yeah, it could be, you know, do you want built-ins that the radios are all built in and it's all there ready to go? Or do you just want to have a pretty simple a desk, place where you can set the radios down? Um, what's this box truck? Is is it going to be strictly just radios and that's it? Or are you going to use it for other things? So if you had, uh, say, for, you, you know, hauling uh, other things and equipment and, well, if you had a fold down table that can fold up, now you can, uh, you know, put equipment in there when you want to operate. You just flip the tables back down, set your radios up, and off you go. Um, mounting antennas on the uh, 
on the vehicle or i mean there's many many things that there's not just the inside it there's everything else on the outside so it uh you know first is figuring out what you want to do what's your like as christian was saying what's your end goal do, is it just for you is it for others to use do you want to have company with you you know two positions three positions then space becomes a limitation and a, and a factor so it, it, there's a lot uh, involved in doing something it sounds like a fun project that yeah. would be a, that would be a blast i would do yeah, absolutely for sure. uh thank you for the question we appreciate that uh mike here today thank you for putting a cue in front of your question can you rephrase that finish that off for us i don't quite understand we'll come back to you mike mike uh let us know all the rest of that question or rephrase it for me if you don't mind let's see another question here how can i calculate the best height for a dipole that's from craig um, a good start is a half wavelength. So for 40 meters, say a, a good height uh, is going to be 60 feet, 66 feet uh, is going to be your height. So it's going to be based on the wavelength of the antenna. So depending on where it's, what frequency you're operating will, will dictate the height. And what does the height do? It basically affects on a horizontal antenna, it affects your takeoff angle. And so if once you get it above uh, half wavelength, then the takeoff angle is low enough to where you'll have effective communications at distance. If you have it low, it becomes more of an NVIS situation and the, your takeoff angle is much higher and it's more of a local antenna so in, the, in the simplest terms. All right. Great question, though. Thank you so much for that. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, we got some time for another one. We're going to be providing some live coverage after the show. So if you joined us here for this part of it, you want to hang out for a, a little while longer after once the uh, net hits the air. Cool. And in just a little bit, we'll get some questions in and we will uh, say so long to our podcast listening audience. Maybe a couple more questions. If you have a question, put a cue in front of it. If you're here, here's a question. What's the difference between the different sizes of ladder lines um, most of it's going to be impedance. It's, uh, you have 300 ohm, 450 ohm, um, 600 ohm, uh, ladder line, and that's all going to be de determined by the wire size and the spacing, uh, between, uh, between the, the wires. So, uh, that's your, your three common, uh, feed line impedances. So it's, uh, mainly it's going to be the impedance of the feed line is the differences. Okay. All right. Let's see. We got another question here. Oh, dear. My SWR is 25 plus. What the heck is going on? Ooh. Oh, David. You have no antenna. That's not an antenna, <laughs> 25 bro. Plus, 25 plus, or do you mean 2.5 plus? It's, no, 25. Uh, 25. But I've never there seen is no anything point. like that. It kind of, my, my I, meter is just like, just, nah, it doesn't work. That's basically no antenna hooked up, or there's a uh, short on the end of the feed line, and even then, yeah, uh, that is no antenna or your feed line is shorted. All right, well, here's another question. Yeah, that doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look good. Uh, we have a question from Mike. He's here. I'm going to try to uh, cobble this together here to set up a computer to his FTDX10, which I hear is a, a fantastic radio. Mm -hmm. He wants to operate digital what does he what does he need to make that happen is that some sort of connective cable does anybody know how that works on that rig i know it let's see dx10 it probably has a if it's like the 101 it's going to have either uh rs232 or or usb port and um to uh so you're going to utilize one of those and then the software that uh, you want to utilize and he wants to do ft8 or just digital Operate digital, looks like. Looks operate, operate digital. digital. So, yeah. yeah. So you're going to have a, um, like, uh, on the 450s that uh, both Scotty and I have set up for FT8, uh, you got uh, an RS-232, the old school uh, uh, link, and um, that goes to the computer so that the... Uh, computer and uh, and the radio talk back and forth and then there's an audio cable uh between the uh 
between the radio and the computer for the audio for but uh yeah those are the in the simplest terms so uh usb or rs-232 for scotty yeah yeah absolutely and i think he just put it just added to his question in the chat asking uh, what level of computer is needed so I, I think he might be wondering how much of a hot rod computer you might need oh. to work digital modes and you don't need a fancy computer at all this is all very low low cpu power low ram um it can uh, you can operate digital um over a usb cable to your rig um on a, on a, on a, a very basic bare bones um computer those 60 dollars computers you guys got uh here a while ago i mean what are mm -hmm. they i mean they're just a like a celeron or uh or some simple dual yeah, core yeah, uh, computer it's only got like four four gigs of ram um with a yeah low a low low speed um processor yeah i think it's a four core um barely runs windows tens but but i got it uh but it's running um you know uh, ft8 and i got jsa call working on it and fl digi's on there so i don't have dialed in yet but yeah so you don't need a fancy computer at all oh good news there you go there you go that's good all right i think we've done that swr of 25 plus makes me nervous <laughs> yeah, that that's... officially means you do not have an antenna anymore. You've got something else so... going on. Mm -hmm. Or you got a bad piece of coax. Bad coax, Some's, bad connector. Something's not right. <laughs> yeah, usually like when my connectors go wrong or something's wrong, it, it'll be like, you know, in the five or six, even three sometimes, it'll be consistent all the way across that coax. The reading will just stay the same pretty much. I'm like, ah. Oh, man, we got time for one more question. Michael wants to know, he's got an off-center fed uh, inverted V. Do both legs have to be 180 degrees opposite, or can you uh, fudge a little off-axis? Fudge. You can fudge. fudge it. Uh, just make it fit. Whatever works for you. And, uh, I mean, so we talk about the angles of inverted Vs. So let's go back to the basic dipole antenna, which is flat top. The impedance is 72 ohms, but when you bring the ends down to make an inverted V, all you're doing is changing the impedance at the uh, feed point. And uh, so on an off-center fed dipole, it's no big deal. Just uh, bring it down to where you can make it fit and uh, go from there. And you'll, you'll be fine. And don't forget in your box truck for that question, don't forget to put the Nano Nano Plus <laughs> HD <laughs> version 7. We've got 10 yeah. more left. Nano Nano. Scotty and I bought a, uh, a, a small company out of the back of a wagon <laughs> in a parking lot. And uh, so we have been trying to get the pixels more than the size of a stamp. But, you know, you probably need it. So we're up to, what, four pixels now? I think we're working on five. We can almost, we get, uh, what is he, Emojicon, Emojicon, you know, the ones that look real. Not very useful, <laughs> yeah, but we got to get our money back somehow. You know, the parking garage in Timonium should have told me something was up, but hey, whatever. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't get the guy with the box of sneakers. You know, we had to get the guy with the Nanu, Nanu Plus. Nanu. <laughs> We want to know what you're struggling with. Let us know. Contact us. The description is in, uh, well, the information is in the description. Uh, you can find us on TikTok, Discord, Facebook, and, of course, YouTube. Don't forget, if you find value in this community and uh, this program, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Buymeacoffee.com slash 100 watts. We'll take care of that. And I think this feels real good to be back together with y'all. So I am going to say 73, Steve. Uh, thanks for coming back here. 73, Christian. Yep. Se 73, Scotty. And, uh, 73, it's good to be back in the saddle. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Y'all take care of yourselves. Look after each other. Stay warm wherever you are. And by all means, if you can, please try and stay above the noise. 73, y'all. 73. 73, everyone. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.